Hey there, I'm Robin, and today we are taking a look under the hood at a simple and cost-effective way of inspecting the AC system in your car. Temperature Diagnostics. Now, you don't need any expensive tools or have to have a lot of knowledge on the topic. It's not rocket science. Temperature diagnostics is commonly used to determine the most typical failures within the system. Now, you probably already know that the operation of the air conditioning system depends on a cyclic change of the refrigerant state. The refrigerant can change its state from a gaseous state to a liquid form and the other way around. And these changes happen when the air pressure and the temperatures change inside of the loop. And these changes repeat continuously within every AC cycle in your system. Out of all the important factors that determine the AC process, the temperature is key. And here's why. Temperature-based diagnostics is an easy method to troubleshoot the system. All you do is simply measure the temperature at different places in the loop. That's it. It's that simple. The temperature diagnostics method is easy, reliable, and cost-effective. Everyone can use it. All you need is a digital thermometer. And it works on most vehicles, as long as the vehicle has unconstrained access to the AC loops, channels, and components. This method could tell you where the problem in your system is potentially located and what the problem basically is. The main tool you'll need is a thermometer. I suggest using a professional thermometer, which is pretty inexpensive. You can either use an infrared operated thermometer or one with a probe. In either case, the digital readout will make it easier to see the temperature. You'll also want to get a temperature range table showing the correct temperatures for a given loop design. Now, you don't necessarily need one of these, but I do recommend it. They are pretty helpful. Now let's go take a look under the hood. You also need easy access to the AC loop ducts and components. Some of these can be hard to access, so it's recommended to learn your AC system's layout beforehand to get familiar with the design and the placement of the most crucial components to measure. There are several places where temperature should be measured. On the specific component surfaces, on the component's lines, or at the component's in and outlets, without detaching, of course. Find out where in your car the following components are located. The condenser, the compressor, receiver dryer, and possibly evaporator, orifice tube, and expansion valve. But sometimes it can be impossible to take a measure of these due to the sophisticated design of the HVAC module and difficult access. First, Start the engine and set the AC on to the coldest air and maximum blow. Wait until the engine achieves its proper operational temperature, which is typically 90 degrees Celsius or around 190 degrees Fahrenheit, and you're good to go. Depending on the pressure side where the specific AC loop components are located, each element has a normal range of temperatures in which they operate properly. Temperatures outside of the normal range, too high or too low, can indicate a number of potential issues. These issues relate to the components itself, other components in the loops, and other components in the system or the consumables applied. The most common result of various malfunctions is usually poor performance of the system. Not enough cool air in the vehicle's cabin is a sign to start troubleshooting. Let's have a look at one spot that's easy to access. The receiver dryer or the line to the receiver dryer that's between the condenser outlet and the receiver dryer. Under normal working conditions and in a healthy system, the proper range of the temperature should read between 30 to 50 degrees Celsius or 90 to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. This is actually something you can sense without a thermometer because you can easily tell the element is too hot if it's above 50 degrees Celsius or 120 degrees Fahrenheit. A temperature that is way too high at this spot can mean many things, but here are the most common. Some blockage in the loop. If there is a blockage in the loop, the clogs inside restrict the refrigerant flow whether inside the condenser, inside the receiver dryer, or inside the expansion valve. Clogs are critically dangerous for the system vitality, are always related to impurities in the system, and can have various origins. If the temperature is way too high, it could be due to improper operation of the condenser. This can also have many potential root causes, from the AC fan that does not operate due to physical damages, or outer soiling of the heat exchanger surface. Corroded and missing fins are typical for climates with a lot of moisture and where salt is spread during the winter. Seemingly light physical damages can reduce operation of the condenser. Too high of temperature is also related to too high of pressure in the system. These are typically an outcome of improper system charges, too much UV dye, or other consumables in the loop. High temperature can also relate to overheating, and this would normally mean not enough lubrication of the compressor, meaning there was no oil or improper oil was applied. As you can see, this troubleshooting method is easy and effective. 
To learn about more spots to measure and about all the potential issues related to improper temperature ranges, I recommend you get one of the posters created by Nissens. It's a complete overview of the spots and indicates proper and improper temperature ranges. You can get a free copy sent to your garage or a digital version. Just visit nissens.com climate. I'm Robin, and thanks for letting me show you what's under the hood. <laughs>